Hello, I'm going to talk to you about an optimal algorithm for triangle counting in the stream. This is joint work with Rajesh Jairam. Now, I wanna start by telling you what I mean by in the stream. So streaming graph algorithms are a class of algorithms for very large graphs that arrive one edge at a time. By very large, I mean they're much too large to fit in main memory. And by one edge at a time, I mean you're going to see the graph as the list of all of its edges in some arbitrary order. So examples of applications of this kind of idea are things like say you see a very large social network as a series of events of the form, Alice is friends with Bob, Bob is friends with Charlie, and so on. Or alternatively, consider the situation when you have a really large graph and you have it, all, and you have it stored on some very slow storage device. So you can't efficiently random access it, but you can stream through it on your, uh, on your much more limited main memory. And you want to calculate some kind of statistics of it. Now, the study of streaming algorithms in general goes back to the 70s, but uh, for streaming graph algorithms, this really kicks off with uh, this paper of Bayusef Kumar and Shiva Kumar, which uh, analyzes, which um, gives streaming graph algorithms via reductions to these algorithms for streaming vector problems. And the graph problem that they studied is this problem of triangle counting. So in the triangle counting problem, you're going to see this graph as a stream of edges, and you want to estimate how many three cliques, how many triangles are there in this graph. Now, there are practical implications to this problem. Uh, it's been used as a method of spam detection. Uh, it is closely related to the concept of the transitivity coefficient of a graph, which is important in the analysis of social networks. But on a theoretical level, it's also interesting because it is the simplest graph counting problem that requires non-local information. By non-local information, I mean, if I just tell you this is the list of neighbors of this vertex, that's insufficient for you to deduce how many triangles are there at this vertex. You need to join together information from at least two different you know, lists of neighbors. Now, in their paper, they gave an MN over T all cubed space algorithm for this problem in the case where your graph has M edges, N vertices, and T triangles. This was later improved to MN over T, which um, can be small when T, because T can potentially be large as, as large as M times N, but it requires the graph to be very dense. And in particular, if you think about the case of a sparse graph, where typically the most of the vertices are going to have a like constant degree, then it's not clear that this will give you anything sublinear at all. So natural question to ask is, can you promise anything stronger for sparse graphs, which after all, are one of the most common kinds of graphs in real world applications? Unfortunately, this result of Braverman, Atrofsky, and Vilenchek tells you that no, you can't. Even if you assume that there are omega of m triangles in a graph, there is a family of graphs which includes graphs with zero triangles and omega of m triangles such that distinguishing between the two requires omega of m space. But the good news is, the graphs that are used to prove this lower bound are pathological graphs. They have this really unusual structure in that every single triangle in the graph intersects at just one edge. And so intuitively, you can see why it would be hard to distinguish between these two cases. If that one really important edge arrives early in the stream, when you, don't, you can't tell it from all the other edges, then unless you're keeping omega of m edges, you probably won't keep it. And so you'll have no idea which of these, which of these two cases you're in. So a natural question to ask is, 
can you do better on more reasonable graphs? And it turns out that if you say, okay, there, will be, there can be no more than delta E triangles sharing any given edge, then this lower bound goes from being omega of M to being omega of M times delta E over T. And there's a series of algorithms that use this extra parameter to achieve a sublinear space. Um, in particular, um, the culmination of uh, the, the, the work on the, the, with this specific parameter is this algorithm of Pan Syracacus that gives you M over square root T plus M delta E over T space, which actually up to a log factor can be proved to be optimal. But this lower bound instance, like the lower bound instance we saw before, is an it's another pathological graph. This time, the unusual structure is that every single triangle in the graph intersects at a single vertex. And so naturally, you ask what happens if we say that no more than delta V tri uh, triangles can share a single vertex? And it turns out what you get is that the lower bound now becomes m square root delta v over t rather than m over root t. So then, uh, you know, with this, with these extra parameters, the you can get uh, there's an algorithm that's known that gets m times del delta e over t plus square root delta v over t plus one over t to the two thirds. So almost takes these lower bounds, except that it has this additional one over t to the two thirds term. I also wanted to point out here another series of work using a different parameterization, where instead you look at like the, the max degree of the graph, uh, D, and there that's MD over T is the best you can get. So this is the um, pre-existing work. And the algorithm that we present for this problem is a new algorithm that gets M delta E over T plus square root delta V over T. In other words, it is tight, to those lower bounds up to a log factor. Moreover, it, also, it subsumes that alternative par parameterization I mentioned by the maximum degree of the graph because delta E can be at most D, you can't have more than max degree uh, triangles sharing a single edge, and delta V can be at most D choose two. So for the remainder of the talk, I want to talk about the algorithm and how it works and why it works. So to start with, I want to bring you back to, a, uh, to, a, to, an, uh, to, an, to an algorithm of Tsurikakis, Kangmir, and Thalutsus, which counts triangles by uniformly subsampling the stream or um, other source of edges. This was not exclusively an, angle, an, an algorithm for streaming triangle counting. So in this algorithm, you keep edges with probability P, you count how many triangles you see, and then you multiply it by P to the minus, one, minus three because your chance of keeping any given triangle was P cubed. Now, in order to get like at least a constant number of triangles, which is what you'll need if you want like a, say a 10% accuracy estimate of the number of triangles, you're gonna need P to be at least one over T to the one third so that you're getting triangles with probability at least one over T. And then also this, when uh, delta E is large, this M delta E over T term also ends up coming in. So you get a performance of M times one over T to the one third plus delta E over T. Okay, so how can we, uh, how can we improve on this, this one over T to the one third term? Well, the first thing we could try is, is observing that um, when we're looking at this stream of edges, you know, each triangle will have its three edges arrive in some order. Suppose that we've sampled the first two edges of a triangle. Well, then when we see its third edge, regardless of whether or not, you know, the coin that we're flipping to decide whether we keep edges tells us to keep it or not, we can already say, okay, I see that this closes a triangle. And so I'll like add one to my count of how many triangles I've seen. Now your chance of counting any given triangle is p to the is, is p squared. 
So you multiply the count by p to the minus two, and this means that now this one over t to the one third term becomes a one over square root t term. So that gives you uh, an improvement, uh, but uh, you could still naturally ask, okay, we're getting these um, first two edges of triangles, uh, these, these, two, they, these length two paths, by independently sampling edges. Is there some other thing that we could do that would increase our chance of getting one of these paths? And so a natural thing to try is to use the uh, vertices that in, that are at the center of these paths. So the idea here is instead of sampling edges, what we'll do is we will sample vertices. And, and by sample here, you shouldn't think of this as storing the vertices. You know, you have a hash function, which with probability P tells you that a vertex is sampled. And then when you see an edge in the stream, because remember this is a stream of just edges, you will keep that edge if it is incident to a sampled vertex. So you'll just check both of its endpoints with your hash function. Then you again look for edges that complete these length two paths to triangles. Well, now you're finding triangles with probability P and you're still only keeping edges with probability P, 2P. So that seems great. But the problem is that now, if you have many triangles sharing a vertex, you'll either get all of them or none of them. So your variance increases the more triangles share a vertex. In particular, imagine that you know, we have a graph that contains at most, that's where, where vertices are allowed to be shared by up to delta V triangles. Well, now there could be as few as T over delta V of these vertices that you know, are at the center of, uh, of, of a bunch of hubs of delta V triangles. And moreover, it could be the case that for each of these vertices, all of the edges incident to that vertex arrive first in the stream and all of the edges around arrive last, which would mean that if you don't sample any of these T over delta V uh, vertices, you won't see any triangles. So definitely P will have to be at least delta V over T for you to have any chance of getting a good estimator. And that gives you like M delta V over T samples, which is great when delta V is small, but in general is non-comparable to the other algorithm that we described. In particular, when delta V is as large as T, this doesn't give you anything sublinear at all. So our algorithm can be seen as a hybrid of these kind of two extremes of ways of sampling edges. Our idea is you first sample vertices with probability P. Then when you see an edge incident to a vertex, you sample it with probability Q. And then again, you look for edges that complete triangles. Now, you will find a triangle if, for the first two of its edges to arrive, you sample the vertex that, 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 that they intersect at, and you sample both of them. So with probability P, and then with probability Q squared if you've sampled the vertex. So you'll, after you've got your count, you'll multiply it by one of the PQ squared. So how are you gonna set P and Q in this? Well, observe that the number of, that you're now keeping each edge with probability, you know, PQ or 2PQ, but you're finding triangles with probability PQ squared. So that suggests you want P to be really small because, you know, you pay more of a penalty for Q being small in your probability of finding triangles. But the problem is that the smaller P is, the more those vertices with many triangles hurt you because the more your triangle count depends on whether or not you know, you've sampled, you were lucky enough to sample some high degree vertex. And so the larger delta V is, the larger you're going to need to make P. And it turns out that you know, when you set P, according, P and then Q accordingly, what you end up doing is keeping M over T times delta E 
plus square root delta v samples. So then that gives you our result. You have uh, this, you have this algorithm that is optimal to the best known lower bounds of this problem up to a log n factor. And that log n factor is just coming from the fact that storing an edge requires log n bits. And so that is all I had to say. Thank you.